everyone. Just wanted to take a minute to talk a little bit about piecewise functions. So we'll go over a couple things. We'll talk about evaluating piecewise functions. We'll talk about graphing piecewise functions. And we will talk about um, writing the equations of piecewise functions. So ultimately, what is a piecewise function? A piecewise function is just a kind of um, a function where you look at essentially a component wise, right? You look at different pieces uh, and you put them together. Um, so a thing that we were kind of talking about before with the absolute values, right? If I had f of x equals the absolute value of x, um, you can actually write this as a piecewise function. Because if you recall, it looks like that, which is essentially we took that line and flipped it up, or we took this line and flipped it up. Um, so essentially what we've done is we've looked at the line negative x up until 0. And then from 0 on, we just looked at f of x uh, equals x. So essentially, we could rewrite the absolute value function in this way. I could say it's negative x until x is um, less than 0, right? If it's less than 0, it's negative x. And it's just x when it's greater than or equal to 0. Now, it doesn't matter which side you put 0 with. It's typically put with this one, but it's your call. So essentially, that is what a piecewise function is, right? I'm looking at the negative part of uh, the negative line over on this side and the line on the other side, the positive one. Um, so, but they can be even more simplistic. See this one right here, this is a piecewise function because it is defined by two different things, right? It's this regular line, but then at this one, we're looking at this point instead, okay? Instead of looking at the line for whatever reason, at this point, this is happening. So if we were to evaluate f of nine, what I would do is I would figure out where is f of nine defined. So f of nine is defined over here and it is nine. Okay, if I had been given f of 5, I would have had to have used this point, but because I'm not, it doesn't make a difference. Okay. Now, something like this, where I'm looking at negative 2, as you can see, there's a couple different things going on here. There's three different functions, really, that I would be writing. From negative infinity over to negative 2, we would be dealing with negative 1. Um, at negative 2, we're looking at negative 3. And from here on, we're going to have a parabola, which is a quadratic. Uh, but anyway, so when we're looking at negative 2, we're looking here and saying, well, where is it defined? It's not defined here because it's open. Not defined here because it's open, so it's going to be here. So at negative 2, it is negative 3. Right? So that's essentially what we're doing here. Now, if we had gotten that using um, equations or something like this, right? what are we going to do? Well, we're going to look at and figure out which of them it applies to. So I'll look, and I'm saying I have to evaluate it for 4. Uh, 4 is not less than 1, so I'm going to ignore that. 4 is not equal to 1, so I'm going to ignore that. And 4 is between this. If it didn't apply to any of them, by the way, I would just write undefined. But it, it does apply to this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug it in here. So I'd have 4 minus 3 is equal to 1. Plug it in. I get 1. So get another one. So for something like this, right, we're looking for not 3 and 3. So when it's not 3, it's everything but 3, right? So we could have been any number but 3. And this one, it is 3, so I deal with 4. All right, and one more. That was very similar. Okay, so let's look at this one. Now, one more. One more. Okay, so let's look. So when I'm looking at this, I want 4, and I need to figure out which of these it applies to. Well, this is less than negative 3, so it's not that. Negative 3 to 2, not that. Greater than 2. All right, so I would plug it in here. 5 times 4 minus 19 is equal to 20 minus 19, which is equal to 1. Okay, so be equal to 1. We'll submit. All right. Now let's look a little bit about graphing them. Now this can be a little bit tricky just because of the system, personally. So let's look at what it wants from us. So it wants between uh, essentially negative infinity to 1. I'm graphing this line. All right? And from greater than 5, I want 2. So let's just look at 5. We'll go to 2. And I have to drag it. Okay. So there... There's this part. This part we have settled 
Um, the only thing is we have to be careful of the end point, right? I do need to open, make that circle open, right? I'm not including five. I'm just saying greater than five. So that is an open end point. For this part, we would need to figure out what's happening here at uh, one. So if I look at one, well, let me just plug it in and see what's happening. If I plug it in at one, I'd get three times one minus four, right? So that'd be three minus four, which is equal to negative one. So we know at one, it's gonna be negative one. And then I have a slope of three, right? So I would go down three, one, two, three, over one, down three, right? Down three over one, down one, two, three, over one, down one, two, three, over one, okay? Now we do need to be careful because we do need to include that point, uh, not include that point, um, and that would be ultimately how we graph it. And I got that wrong because I needed to, I needed to change it to arrows. So that's something you do need to be careful of, right? That is an arrow, not an open circle, <laughs> not a closed circle, right? It doesn't end there. So um, let me graph this one correctly to illustrate that you have to make sure to change the endpoints so that it accurately um, does that. So there you know, there you go. So at negative two, so I plug in negative two, I'd get negative two plus five, which is equal to uh, three, okay? So at negative two, I am at three. And then from there, it's gonna be just kind of like that, right? And there we go. Now I've made it a narrow. Um, and this one, I actually am gonna leave it as a closed circle because it is less than or equal to. This one over here, I'm going uh, from two, so I plug in two, I get negative two plus four, which would be two, right? So I'm going from two on, two, and oops, I'm going down like that. And I'm genuinely curious if that's gonna chill. Oh, there we go. Okay, so if you just do once and then you turn it into an arrow, it does go all the way down. Good to know. And now you do need to change that to a open circle. Now let's confirm that we did that one right. And we did that one right because I remembered to actually change it to arrows. So there you have it. You can continue on with those and you can do a little bit more. The last thing I do want to talk about is writing an absolute uh, piecewise function. So this could be something as simple as this, right? Where I have to write my equation in my line. So it seems to be um, x minus one, right? If I write my equation in my line for x not equal because it's every, it's this for everything but negative four. And at negative four, it goes up to six, okay? X equals negative four, all right? So it could be something like that, or alternatively, It could be something like this, right? I have this equation in my line. Um, so what do we have going on here? We have a, seem to have a slope of negative two. So one, two, one, oh, geez. One, two. So it seems to be at negative 11. Negative two X minus 11. Four, and what do we have here? We have for when x is less than or equal to negative three. Right? And we are including um, that endpoint. So we have the, and then on this one, we're not including the endpoint, is x is greater than five, and now what is happening there? Well, it's just four, right? So let's check our work, and there we have it. Okay, so you could go through this process and continue on with them, um, but most, it's honestly, very similar going forward. It's just a, a matter of writing your equations up your lines. All right, let me know if you have any questions and have a great day.